Okay, well, hello to all. I wanted to put together a short video this morning just to give you some perspective on the course and what we hope to accomplish and so forth. So a couple of things. I want to uh, briefly go through the syllabus, which if you go to the content section on Blackboard, uh, you will find the uh, uh, syllabus there. You know, looks looks a lot like this. And uh, let me see if I'm able to pull it up on here in screen share, which mm, doesn't seem to be the case. So hang on just a second. And let me uh, let me see. Okay, I think I have it. So let me try and share this. Cool. Okay. All right. So if you um, you know go to uh, the uh, content section of Blackboard, you'll find the uh, syllabus and so forth. And, uh, you know, it gives us, obviously, the general information and so forth. Uh, in terms of contact, if you need to get a hold of me for anything, just uh, uh, probably the easiest thing is my Gmail. I check my Gmail probably 50 times a day, if not more. Uh, the university email, when it's functioning, I am uh, pretty much in and out of that. Uh, office phone number, I wouldn't waste my time because that's not accessible to me easily uh, from off campus and so forth. So anyway, Gmail is the way to reach me if you need to. Uh, as far as the uh, required texts, and uh, there was a bit of confusion, and it may not be uh, linked just yet, but it is the uh, textbook that is uh, listed here. It is uh, Stephen Robbins, Timothy Judge, Organizational Behavior, the 19th edition that is the textbook that we will be using. But we use it primarily for topical research. So don't get too involved with, uh, oh, I have to do these questions at the end of each chapter because there's going to be a quiz. I don't you know, really do it that way. Uh, so just keep uh, the text for reference. It's uh, probably a good way to go and so forth. You can read through the uh, syllabus in terms of, uh, you know, the different aspects, course description, uh, you know, learning outcomes and so forth. Uh, and uh, as far as uh, the uh, uh, third page, which is, uh, you know, grading, which I know everybody is uh, uh, always concerned with, uh, there will be a final project, which at least at this point is 20% uh, of your grade. Uh, there likely will be some kind of a final exam, but uh, we'll discuss that when we get there uh, farther into the semester. Uh, you know, there are some news write-ups, and uh, the syllabus describes that. But basically what we're looking at is something that is contemporary that we can share with each other. Now, the way we're going to share this is going to be on the discussion board because this is an online course, and as such, there are no required uh, attendance times. It is non-synchronous, which is to say that uh, there are no specific hours attached to it. So we can't uh, say, well, uh, at 6 p.m. on Thursdays, we're going to you know, meet in Zoom and so forth. Although I will be doing some, what I refer to as voluntary Zoom sessions. Uh, so feel free to join in uh, if and when you can, but it is not a mandatory requirement since this is a non-synchronous online course. But you will be doing at least three, in quotes, news write-ups on the discussion board. And it's something topical, something that relates to organizations and organizational behavior and so forth. And, and we'll put some more meat on the bones with that. Uh, but uh, you'll be doing three of them, and uh, they're worth about 5% each, or they are worth 5% each per the syllabus, at least at this moment. Now, it says quizzes, nine at 3% each. Well, we may end up doing three at 9%, and we'll talk more about that as well, because I'm not a big fan of quizzes, because that, that sort of implies that, oh, well, even when you're dead tired and you get home from work and you've got family issues, you've got to go home and read this ridiculous book because there's going to be a quiz tomorrow and you don't want to fail the quiz. You know, I remember I sat where you sit. 
So we're going to try and make this. I, I can't promise you it's going to be a fun semester because we all have a different definition of what you know fun is. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's not going to be a torture semester. At least it's not intended to be. So, again, news write-ups, a final project, discussion board forums, uh, some quizzes, and we'll decide on that. And then we'll decide later in the semester about a final exam. Uh, so, you know, you can thumb through, you know, more of the uh, syllabus in that regard, give you a description on news write-ups. And, you know, I would like to try as much as we can to stick to, uh, you know, some some due dates uh, and, and so forth. So, for example, uh, due dates for news write-ups. Well, uh, one by March 6th. Now, is it a problem if it's March 7th? No, but it would be a problem if it's April 23rd, you know, so let's let's not abuse the idea that, you know, I'm, I'm not going to stick hard fast to the moment on these dates. But March 6th, April 7th, May 10th, uh, those are suggested dates, you know, a couple of days one way or the other is not a big deal. Talk a little bit about the final project, and you can read through that. Uh, we'll be sending out uh, uh, some announcements and things with uh, regard to that. Writing standards, please adhere to uh, writing standards. Uh, there are a few things worse than uh, taking someone that's a university student and dealing with syntax errors and spelling errors and, and so forth. Uh, if it's uh, an ESL issue, and I'm very sensitive to that, but if it is, then please do get someone to uh, proofread it for you and, uh, you know, make make liberal use of spell check and, and things like this, you know, in Word documents. Uh, most of the submissions, uh, especially a final project, at least if it were a written form, and we'll talk more about that, but if it were a written form, you really want to kind of adhere to uh, APA 7th, which is the um, uh, current you know, format sheet for the School of Business uh, and APA 7th when you look that up and you can Google that. So it's it's real easy to find uh, APA 7th will, uh, you know, kind of give you a lot of information. Uh, due date on uh, this final project will be May 7th. Uh, I really don't like to work with uh, late submissions and I've uh, become uh, less a fan of incompletes. Uh, so, you know, in terms of uh, an incomplete, uh, don't just presume that this is going to happen. Now, I still do incompletes because I really, uh, in, in my teaching career since 1999, I've given out very few Fs. It used to be I, I said no Fs. But I have to tell you, I was disappointed uh, over a, a few recent semesters where some students just absolutely did nothing. No discussion board, no timely submissions or anything like this. Uh, you know, what, what is it you expect me to do? I have nothing to grade. So what would I give you? Uh, an incomplete to give you six weeks to, again, do nothing? So that, that just doesn't make sense. So let's, let's try and do something. I, I really... I uh, hate being the one that has to plug an F into the system, but I can only grade what's before me. Uh, I will say this, that no matter what grade you receive, and, and you should know that uh, in terms of ar trying to argue your way into a higher grade, that, that ship sailed in 1999. You know, that, that, that'll never happen. But I will meet with you personally on Zoom, in a private Zoom, whatever it is, and go over your work with you and tell you what I think is, uh, uh, you know, either deficient or it can bear some improvement. So when you get a, a grade, be it a final grade or whatever, final is never really final. If you're willing to rework, for example, a final project, I'm certainly willing to regrade it. Uh, so uh, let's, um, you know, keep that in mind. So don't get all panicky, I guess, is my point about grades. And, you know, I know we're grade phobic these days and, and probably more so in your generation than mine. Uh, you know, mine, we just hated the professor. You know, uh, I, <laughs> I shouldn't mention the guy's name, so I won't. But uh, many, very many years ago, when I was doing uh, undergrad at Salve Regina University in Newport, Rhode Island, uh, there was a uh, psychology professor 
that I absolutely hated deep in my heart. And I did badly in the course, my own fault. But, uh, you know, I mean, I always seemed to do well with professors I liked, and I always seemed to do less well with professors I didn't like. Um, and, and, you know, at the end of the day, it really is, uh, you know, the work I submitted instead of, you know, thinking what I thought of this individual and everything, I probably could have put all that effort into something that would have worked out better for me. But, uh, you know, I guess my point is I sat where you sit. I try not to be that professor that I hated. So, you know, uh, hopefully uh, we'll have an enjoyable semester. Um, you know, you'll read in the uh, syllabus about things like, um, you know, academic uh you know, honesty, uh, you know, and, and so forth. So, you know, I mean, ju just don't, you know, at the end of the day, there's, there's really no reason. I'm always after objective work, which is to say work that, picture it this way. We're all tempted, you know, we all, we're all smarter than, you know, we really are. You know, uh, we certainly think so. And, you know, there's something called the Dunning-Kruger effect, and, and you can research that if you choose. But it speaks to the idea that, you know, we, we certainly, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing it and, and drilling down quite a bit, but we all think we're smarter than we really are. Okay. So we're tempted to make these seemingly sweeping empirical statements about life, about the way the world works, about, you know, whatever course we happen to be taking, you know, whatever, whatever that topic is, about finance, about, uh, uh, you know, you get the idea. When we're tempted to do that, try to picture me, and, and, and God forbid, but uh, try to picture me sitting on your shoulder, whispering into your ear, says who in other words where'd you get this stuff from well the uh, you know what what should happen should should that's something we call in academia the fallacy of shoulds there is no what should happen you know and under what theory whose set of rules you know uh, because I personally feel this way, this is what should have, well, there it is. It's my own personal opinion, and you know what they say about opinions. So forget the fallacy of shoulds. I never want to hear, well, what should, mm -mm 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 -mm. stop. Save yourself the embarrassment. The other thing is, when we're tempted to go there, citations, references, Where'd you get this from? You know, di dig a little deeper. So we see something on the news, whatever the topic may be. And there's, there's plenty of stuff, you know, today to agitate us and irritate us. And we sit back and we say, well, so-and-so, this, that, and the other thing. Well, where'd you get that from? Well, I saw it on the news. Oh, well, in that case, we, we should just outright accept all of that nonsense because it, after all, it came from the news. And I don't, I don't care what channel or what newspaper or what, you know, back up, back up what you're tempted to put forth as empirical truth, back it up with expert citations and references, you know, so-and-so this, that, and the other thing according to Smith, according to Jones, according to Keisha Abney, according to whomever, but a recognized expert in the field. And, and put the citation into your work and the reference on, obviously, the reference page. So that's how we avoid academic, uh, you know, what some would call dishonesty or plagiarism, if you will, and things like that. So no reason to do that. I'm not looking for you know, uh, your personal opinion on things, you know, why, why would I want that? You know, I mean, you barely are interested in any personal opinion I might have. So why would you think I'd be interested? You know, it's not that type of a course, sociology, perhaps psychology, perhaps, you know, how do you feel? What do you think here? It's pretty much objective. You know, uh, this is the way things are according to Smith, according to Jones, according to, you know, whomever. So, academic dishonesty there there's no reason to do that so so just don't do it and then you'll get to some kind of a schedule and you know we're we're not going to i i try to go through things topic i am not a fan of most textbooks uh here the dean's office selects 
textbooks and so forth. And so we're, we're kind of blessed, <laughs> excuse me, which is to say stuck with what they choose. But um, uh, I'm not a fan. Uh, so we will do things topically, you know, and, and so if you look, for example, at the schedule, well, we'll start with organization and organization theory, but then we're going to spider into some other things. Then we may come back to that. Uh, at some point, we'll talk about strategy and design. And, and so this, this is kind of a tentative outline in terms of timing and the things that you're probably most concerned with. Uh, and I plugged in there, uh, you know, news write up, you know, news write up one, news write up two, news write up three, and and so forth. And again, uh, we, we can we can use these dates or the dates that I've got, you know, that I listed earlier. Uh, and and it's not a really huge deal, but in that general time frame, uh, I'd like our news write ups, which would be done on the discussion. Uh, and then we talk about different things we're going to be discussing and some PowerPoints and some readings we're going to be doing uh, and so forth. And then we talk about uh, some quizzes. And, uh, you know, again, we'll probably end up with three. We're not going to do nine, but we might do a quiz one somewhere around here. And that would be the material that we had covered, whatever it turns out to be up to that point. And the same thing, uh, quiz two and, and so forth. And then I've got an appended schedule of some things that I want to do later in the semester. Uh, and, and again, uh, they go in a specific area. But one thing that I think organizations do, and some do particularly well and some do very badly, is the idea of improvisation. Now, I know improvisation. What does that mean? Well, one of the greatest examples of improvisation is jazz, you know, improvisation. Uh, because if you go, uh, for example, to New Orleans, the French Quarter, uh, and, and again, Preservation Hall or wherever you would go and see some really good jazz, you'll notice that, well, frankly, you know, if you went two nights in a row, it's not the same, it's the same set. But it's not the same outcome. It's not played the same. It's not the same. And you know who did that really well? And this will mean nothing to you because you're all young kids compared to me. But we used to have back in the day, way back in the day, uh, a group called the Grateful Dead. And the Grateful Dead, and they were at Woodstock, and I was 15 years old at Woodstock, so now you can do the arithmetic and figure how old old really is. Uh, but um, uh, Grateful Dead, I had a professor in my doctoral studies, Dr. Barry Barnes. I, I reference him you know, up here. Uh, and he went to every Grateful Dead concert in this country, everyone. You know, he would get on a plane, he and his wife and all this stuff. Bottom line, he missed nothing. And he noticed very early on that part of what they did, and we'll talk more about it, but part of what they did is, yes, they had their their set that they played at a, at a concert. But it was improvised in the sense that while Jerry Garcia was the lead singer of the group, he didn't necessarily do the same parts every night. They didn't start with the same intro every night. In other words, some some bands are so well rehearsed that when somebody, you know, uh, hits, you know, or, or picks at the, uh, uh, you know, E string on a guitar, well, everybody knows, okay, that, then we start doing this. Grateful Dead was improvised. And they were a great example of that. And Barry Barnes, Dr. Barnes wrote a book uh, that talked about the improvisational management that was employed by the Grateful Dead. Well, the point is that I've established a field of study uh, that deals with improvisational management, improvisational leadership, because that's how business, certainly effective businesses, really work these days. That's how organizations really function these days. And they have to, and we'll talk about why. But anyway, we're going to be spending a fair amount of time, uh, you know, with that. And so, you know, it's... Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, a real, I'm going to stop share with this thing now. Uh, it's a, um, you know, relatively um, simple uh, 
semester in the sense that there aren't, <laughs> excuse me, a whole lot of deliverables, uh, but there are some, and you're going to have to do some things. As far as a final exam, we'll, we'll talk about that during the semester. As far as um, a final project, I want to introduce this idea of flexibility. Now, I started it last semester because, well, because a lot of reasons, but it was to make life better uh, for students. In the old school, old school, we wrote papers. That's what we did. You know, did a course, and at the end of the semester, you got to write this 500-page paper and, you know, punctuation and spelling. And all that. Oh, oh, okay, all right, that's, that's certainly a way to go. And if you are... Uh, you know, if, if you're a great writer and you enjoy writing and uh, particularly objective writing, well-researched with citations and a reference page and all this stuff, if that's your thing, then that's great. So your final project, and we'll talk more about topically what that might be, but if that's your thing, then, then your final project can be a paper. Now, more recent generations prefer the use of, of, for example, PowerPoint. You can embed some video in PowerPoint, an audio track, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. The difficulty with PowerPoint, and this is where you have to be careful, is trying to drill down and do a, a, a thorough job so it does not turn out to be a what I refer to as a college light project, uh, is, is that, you know, PowerPoint by design, you get bullet points you know, on the different slides, and you speak to that. But if you don't, you know, do something in, for example, notes view, where you can put all the detail that you can't really fit on the slide, if you don't do something like that, well, then it, it comes off as very light and superficial presentation. But some people are very good at doing PowerPoint. So if that's your technology, fine. I had some students last semester that did an extraordinary, which is to say extraordinary, I mean, superior, outstanding project, several did projects using video. I mean, you, you guys, you know, you, you know, back in the day, we had slide rules and things like this. Today, you guys could launch the space shuttle from your cell phones. And I guess the point is, you, you guys are, you know, your generation, you're very good at, you know, selfies and stuff like this. You know, well, do that. If your technology is, is videos, think of your final project done as one big selfie. I mean, have your notes, have a camera, have a, I don't know, a background, you know, whatever you would do, and do that. And create, whether it's an MP4 or whether you're going to put it up on, on you know, YouTube uh, privately and, and send me a link at the end of the semester to play that, you know, whatever it happens to be. And we'll talk more about that. But use the technology that you're best suited to. So that's the flexibility that I'm going to build in. I'm not going to torture you with saying, oh, you've got to have a 25-page paper, APA 7th of that supported by a PowerPoint, and it's got to have 50 slides, and it's got to, uh, so you choose. You choose. What are you good at? You guys are so good at so much stuff today. I, I got to tell you, I wish I were 100 years younger. I wish I was coming up in your generation, because you guys are so good with so much really cool technology. Use that. Do that. So your final project is, is somewhat in your own hands. Use the technology that you're most comfortable with, that you're good at, that you're comfortable with. And we'll talk more about that. All right. I was going to do a brief PowerPoint presentation, and I will post that probably later today. Uh, it's kind of an intro PowerPoint, and it doesn't fully embrace everything we're going to discuss in terms of operations, uh, operations, uh, organizational management and uh, organizational behavior. But it does talk about, we do speak to some things uh, that, uh, you know, will be of particular concern to us. But that'll be later today, tomorrow. In the meantime, uh, look at the syllabus. Don't panic. 
this too shall pass. And I will also send out a notice as to when we will do some voluntary Zoom sessions. In the meantime, any question, if I could speak, I'd be successful. Any questions, issues, concerns, reach out to me. Best way to do it is my Gmail, but send it to both NJCU, you know, my NJCU email and my Gmail, both listed on the syllabus. You find it in Blackboard, content section. If you have a problem, reach out. Blessings to all. Have a great day. And I think we're done with this one.